And on the line and on the on the video with us is attorney and host of Ring of Fire Radio, Mike Papantonio. Ringoffireradio.com is the website. Hey, Pap, welcome back to the program. Hello? I cannot hear him. Oh, I've got to pick up the phone. I'm sorry. I, I, I totally forgot I'm so used to Pap coming in by ISDN that... Uh, here we go. There. I just did it. Hey, Pap. Hey, Tom. How are you? I'm so sorry. I forgot to put you on the line. All right. I, it's great to have you with us. Um, hey, Chris Christie, I'm, I'm watching this train wreck and, and wondering, you know, is this something that's unique to New Jersey? And, and, and I'm just curious your take on this. Uh, you, you know, uh, I, I don't you're, know. you're an astute I, observer of politics. Yeah, I don't know if you follow the, 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 the HBO series uh, Boardwalk Empire. No, I never saw it. That's, well, it, basically, it is just shows how New Jersey in the early days, turn of the century, run by thugs, and that's what we have going on now. That's what this story uh, is about. Hmm. I'm amazed. Uh, I'm amazed that when we hear stories about Chris Christie, that they're rarely put into context with where Christie originated. Now, understand before before you had big Wall Street money putting him in office, he was a lobbyist for the securities industry. I mean, he was a front man for the for the hedge funders, for the mortgage hustlers, for the big business that made huge money funding development plans, just like the one that we're talking about today uh, uh, in New Jersey. Uh, You know, you have a mayor, Don Zimmer, who is describing exactly what we would expect to see out of a man like Christie. First of all, you you have to focus on the fact that he's nothing less than a Wall Street developer's dream, Tom. I mean, since he he worked for the industry and, and now continues really to work for Wall Street and the industry as governor. I mean, that's a big advantage. But for some, for some reason, the, the connections have been ignored, I think, primarily because the media has tried to make him look into something in, in, that he's not. Media loves to do that. Yeah, yeah. So how widespread is this? I think it's extremely, you know, it always flows from the top. If you look at any organization, it always flows from the top. This guy's the governor. Not only is the governor, but he's in charge of all the governors throughout the country. He's the, he's the head governor of all governors in this country right now because right. they thought he was the, the face to put forward. But, uh, you know, the, you've, got, you've got to talk about the money behind this guy. Th- that's what this story, everybody seems to be missing this story. Look, the money behind him is Charles Schwab, it's uh, Mort Zuckerman, it's Hank Greenberg, it's uh, Goldman Sachs and J.P. Morgan. They expect their ex-boy, their ex-lobbyist, their employee, to use his new power as a bully, big-mouth tool to get what they want, which are things like uh, uh, what we see happening with the development in, uh, in Hoboken, and, or, or the $2 billion, I don't know, you know this story, where he gave the same crowd that I just said, $2 billion in tax breaks. This is what they expect Whoa. from this guy. $2 billion in tax breaks. And rather than the media focusing on the story, the real story behind this, uh, this thuggish Wall Street character, what they're focusing on is just the, the here and now. But you can't separate the two. The reason I have zero doubt about Mayor Zimmerman, uh, Zimmer, about her account of the political strong-arm bribery that Christie is engaged or in extortion, years. really. Yeah, exactly. It is extortion. Is because he he he's had cover, Tom, from Wall Street big business, that developer crowd who's paid huge money to move uh, their 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 agenda. Mm-hmm. He's their guy. He's their tyrant. He is their mobster mayor uh, at first, and now mobster governor. Excuse me. But the point is, um, I don't know why the media felt so compelled to create this, this fantasy story about who he is. There's a total mm-hmm. fantasy. Yeah. And, but nevertheless, the media kind of likes to do that. But think about this. The money behind that media that created this fantasy came from Wall Street. To, well, to and Wall there's Street. a lot of interlocking boards of directors. And, yeah. Uh, and, well, you know, I mean, you know... The, if the members of the same clubs. Kind the, of thing, exactly kind of. the same club. Yeah. But to me, that's an important part of the story. You have to... It's like having a witness on the stand. You have to understand... Who is this witness? Let me, let me know some about his history. Right. And here we know a guy that was simply the, the go-to boy, the tool for Wall Street when he was a lobbyist 
for the same people that engage in this type of political retribution all the time. Politi- political retribution is a weapon uh, of the first choice with big money types uh, who always feel like they're bulletproof because of the number of politicians that, uh, that, they've, uh, uh, that they've purchased. So Mayor Zimmer, look, she's agreed to take a lie detect- uh, detector test. She's agreed to, to sworn oath that the story she's telling is correct. And he, she has said to their camp, hey, will you do the same? Right. And they've said, of course, no. So uh, it's, it's an interesting story. It's not one that goes away. Right. Add to that story, Tom, the Wolf and Sampson law firm that's, that's behind all this. If I were looking at this case and I were actually the prosecutor in this case, I would probably make it a point to, uh, to include that law firm, Wolf and Sampson, in any kind of lawsuit I brought, whether it was criminal or civil, mm-hmm. uh, if especially if there's a crime involved. And I would make it into a RICO kind of case, which I think they might have before this is all over. Yeah, well, Rico, racketeering, I mean, racketeering in New Jersey are, are like synonyms, aren't they? I think it might be where it originated, frankly. Yeah, but, <laughs> it wouldn't surprise me. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's funny because I've been, you know, I've been, Rachel Maddow's been all over this, and, and, and she's been having these New Jersey, even, you know, good Democratic politicians on her show, and they come on with this New Jersey accent, you know, and the, and the pinstripe suits and, and the big hair, and it's like, Whoa, you know, what a stereotype. Yeah, yeah. It's like. Well, this money, this New Jersey money that we're talking about with Chris, with, uh, Chris Christie, uh, what, we haven't, what we have ignored mm-hmm. is that you've had Wall Street quietly buying up politicians uh, all over the country. Corey, right there from, uh, from New Jersey, is one of them. Uh, Corey Booker. Corey Booker, yeah. Yeah, he's one of them. I mean, he happens to be a Democrat, but they've bought a lot of good Democrats. You might remember Corey Booker feeling outraged when the when there was criticism of Wall Street because Wall Street's invested into Chris Christie right. and when Chris Christie is told get this development done for our Wall Street pal here that's why he's there that's it's that Wall Street money to put him there yeah so what do we do about this pap well I don't know that you can do anything other than what you've been talking about for years and that's get the money out of politics um, yeah. We're going to see the same thing. I mean, you see the story with uh, Hillary Clinton right now, all this huge Wall Street money right. pouring into her campaign. Right. It's turn, time point, to t- roll back Buckley, basically, with a constitutional amendment. Well, that's right. And uh, it's going to be very difficult. We, we can't count on Congress doing anything about it. Mm-hmm. So it has to be a grassroots kind of constitutional amendment. But when you have something that's so fundamental that it can, that it can, uh, it can destroy, and I don't, I don't use that lightly, Mm-hmm. It can deep six democracy and replace right. it with something that's nothing short of corporate fascism. Then you have to say, well, this is important. Unfortunately, this conversation that we're having is so foreign. It's so un- misunderstood or not, not completely not understood by the average American. They don't understand. All they see the story with Chris Christie, for example, something about a bridge, something about a development, and the, the media is so, they're so pathetic. Yeah. That they never tie that up and say, well, the, the story is that Wall Street is buying politicians like Chris Christie right. all over the country. Well, la- last week there was a, uh, a Republican who announced that he was going to run for some major political office, and he was formerly a tobacco lobbyist. I'm, yeah. I'm forgetting who it was now. I, yeah, uh, I don't know. There's I, so I many of them. Well, I can't. I, and, I, I and, work and, Yeah, and so you, so you go on there and say, uh, former tobacco lobbyist and, and you know former state congressman or something, Joe Blow is going to run for governor or senator or whatever. Why don't when we start referring to Chris Christie, start referring, you call it, you know, former Wall Street lobbyist and New Jersey governor, that's Chris right. Christie? That's right. I don't know. That's the, that's my point. Why is it you search, search the stories? Yeah. And you tell me how many times you've seen this this securities interest, this Wall Street connection yeah. tied up to Chris Christie. And then you can understand why he. Well, then everything. Be, yeah. Then everything falls in. Place. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, Pat, Mike Papantonio, ringoffireradio.com, the website. Check it out. Pap, thanks for being with us today. Thank you, Tom. We'll be right back.